Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving all of my thoughts on the teal mask, the great, the good, and the very ugly. An encapsulation of pretty much everything that modern Pokemon has become can be found in the teal mask. And we're gonna talk about it all right now. So let's jump right into things. I would say the teal mask upped my playtime on Pokemon Violet by about 10 hours. That was slowly making my way through the story content catching a ton of the brand new Pokemon, doing some of the side events, and then at the end of the game, exploring the full area of Kitakami, and also doing some of the fun unlocks and side quests to get some incredibly expensive items at the end. I have not yet completed my Kitakami decks. I'm about 10 away from finishing it, and you get a nice little diploma for doing so. There's a good overlap between Paldean Pokemon and Kitakami Pokemon, but also a healthy amount of brand new returning Pokemon. So in total, this is going to serve as my review for the Teal Mask, part one of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. I'll have a second part come out when the next part comes out at the end of the year, and then we will have an all-encompassing review of this generation of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC included at the end. For part one, it really, it, it says a lot. I put out a tweet a couple days ago. It encapsulates everything that is amazing about modern Pokemon and also everything that is deeply frustrating about modern Pokemon. Let's get the headline positives out of the way first, because I think it is important to note that before going into the criticisms. Whatever way they design this open world is incredibly addicting to explore. It was the case with Paldea for me, with the base region. It is the same here in Kitakami. It is addicting to run around the map, scale mountains, explore forests, pick up the bevy of hidden items and Pokeball items littered about the landscape. It is incredibly addicting to continue catching Pokemon, talking to trainers, and raising your team. Everything about how the world is designed is incredibly encapsulating. Everything you need is right in front of you at any moment. New items, whether it might be Pokeballs or healing items, you're always picking up so you can continue to progress on your adventure. You don't always have to go back to town if you don't need to. The fact that the boxes are easily accessible in this new generation of Pokemon continues to fuel that exploration. There are so many chasms and little caves to go into. Some of the caves have Terra Pokemon that you can battle. Others have Pokemon that are brand new to the decks that you can catch. And then others, some have TMs and Pokeball items that you would not regularly find just scattered across on the land. They also do an excellent job of laying out items that are used to evolve brand new Pokemon. So many of the new Kitakami Pokemon that are introduced, whether it's returning Pokemon that haven't yet been on the Switch or brand new evolutions for previously existing Pokemon, use items to evolve. Whether it's Applin's new evolution or some of the old Pokemon introduced that use all the various different stones, you collect these items, you collected them in the base game, you bring them into this game, and you can use so many of them to evolve Pokemon. That continues to further that gameplay loop, which is excellent. So many people have so many criticisms with the performance and some of the handholdiness of modern Pokemon, but nobody can seem to quit the formula that Game Freak has developed in this open world. It is incredibly addicting. It is a major positive. Another major positive, the story is engaging, fun, and as low stakes as a story about selfish turns of people you thought you were friends with and revered deities of a village that turned out to be a lie all along, it's as small and contained as a story like that can possibly be. Kieran and Carmine are excellent. You start out hating Carmine, or at least I did. And by the end, she's one of my favorite companions we've ever had in Pokemon. I absolutely love her, and I love the development that she subtly gets through her dialogue and through watching Kieran turn throughout the story. Kieran starts off as your buddy. You go around the region with him. You learn that he has a fascination with everything going on with Ogre Pond and the Loyal Three and all of this. But as the story continues, Kieran changes and Kieran's motivations and attitudes change. And as his change happens, Carmine change happens. They are played off brilliantly with each other and their connection to the story and to the lore and history through their grandfather, I believe, with the village is 
wonderful. The story is great, and all of the brand new legendary Pokemon, the Loyal Three and Ogre Pond, she's great. They are awesome. How you get to battle them and go back to catch them is an homage to classical Pokemon, where after you finish the story, you go catch all your Pokemon. I'm nostalgic for it. I love it. Ogre Pond and its battle is awesome. It's different phases through the masks that we saw revealed in the trailers, makes for a really fun and engaging combat loop. It is great. The story and the exploration are the highlights of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's first DLC wave as they were with the base game. Kitakami is not a massive region. It is called the land of Kitakami for a reason. It is not a fully fledged region. It does have inspiration to an area of Japan called Kitakami as well. It's a region that on a real world map is nestled between Sinnoh, Johto, and Kanto if you took their real world counterparts and looked at them on a map, which leads to a lot of speculation. What region is Kitakami part of? What greater Pokemon region might we one day see and get references to our adventures in the land of Kitakami? The lore baked in with the story is a major highlight. All of this is wonderful. Going along with all the new Pokemon, there are so many standouts. Diplin is great. The fact that you get to see a Diplin used on Kieran's team is also fun. The way you evolve it is cute compared to how you were able to evolve Applin in the past. They introduce a new Apple type. The things going on with, and this is a major spoiler, so if you have not finished, skip about 15 seconds ahead right here. The new form of Ursa Luna and the side quest that you get to do with it is wonderful. Putting a catch limit in front of it that is reasonable, very smart, because 150 Pokemon in Kitakami is not difficult to achieve, especially with some of the overlap with the Paldea region. That's a great side quest. The fact that we get all this lore about how the Pokemon drifted over to Kitakami from a, a faraway region, and this is the last one, it's, it's, it's great. The lore, the story, the region, as I've harped on for six minutes absolute standout. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in support of me, that is also always greatly appreciated. Unfortunately, as with the rest of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and as with a lot of the last two generations of Pokemon, the performance continues to be abysmal. You should not be chugging at five frames a second in the main town of this DLC. So many story beats take place in this town. So many side quests are started in this town. The hotel lodging that you stay at is in this town. The Pokemon Center of Kitakami, the outdoor Pokemon Center, where you have access to TM making and the Union Circle and all of this, the shops where you can get some of the new items. Everything is centralized in this town. Outside of the Mask Festival, which takes place at Kitakami Hall, this is your central hub, and it lags so bad. The entire region is centered around a mountain, and every time you move your camera to look at said mountain, your performance just starts to take a nosedive. And the mountain is the central figure of the region. The geographic character of the region is the mountain. The mountain is where Ogre Pond lives. At the top of the mountain, you have your references to what's going on with the crystalline structures in Area Zero. The music changes, you get a similar vibe. There's a connection here. So many of the story beats are centered on this focal point of the mountain. The town that you are in, Mosi Town, is at the base of the mountain. So when you're walking around Mosi Town, you're right near the mountain and it kills Switch performance. It's not acceptable. I understand that gameplay, story, a lot of that, uh, just the atmosphere of the region. It's a very beautifully designed region. It's incredibly aesthetically pleasing. It gives you that, that vintage classical Japanese feel that we get in the Johto games specifically. All of that is wonderful. It's not an excuse for abysmal performance. Absolutely abysmal. If you ever move your character into one of the rice paddy fields, your game freezes. 
multiple times throughout my journey, I had massive lag spikes, frozen game. I landed on an awkward spot on my Miraidon when I flew down to Kieran's house. You land in the kind of like rice paddy field, little pond outside of their house. My game completely froze. It stood there for about 15 seconds, and then it teleported me back up to where I had originally taken off from. This is poor, and it feels worse than Scarlet and Violet's performance because you're so centrally focused around this mountain and because it's always attempting to load it in. It feels like it just chugs and chugs and chugs, and there are many moments in the story where it takes away from the experience. Whenever I talk about graphical performance and things of this nature on Switch games specifically, it's always a question of does it impede your enjoyment of the game? And for most of Scarlet and Violet, once you got used to that little bit of jank, it didn't impede my enjoyment. I had to get used to it. This one was awful. There's no other way around it. I don't know what the answer is. More development time, not being this ambitious on the Switch hardware if you're Game Freak, hiring more talented developers or giving your already talented developers more time. I don't work for Game Freak. I don't understand internally what their cycles are. So I cannot propose a correct fix to this. I think it's easy to say, give them more time, don't rush their games. And I, I, if, that's the, if that's the solution, then sure. Because look at a game like Tears of the Kingdom, a much more graphically ambitious game that does not have nearly as many problems as anything Pokemon has put out on the Switch. Is it a matter of we need a new Switch console? Maybe. And all reports are that we're getting a brand new Switch next year. Will that fix it? I don't know. If I'm coming back here in a year's time and maybe on a new system this game runs better, for the game itself, that is a positive. For when it came out and for how it was marketed and for the moment of its release right now, it doesn't do me anything. Performance is the hindrance for this. The Teal Mask is some of the most fun I've had with Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet are right at the top of my rankings for Pokemon games. They're not number one, that is Platinum and Legends Arceus, but they're right in that top five. They're wonderful games with so many good mechanics and incredible story, great cast of characters, but the performance cannot just be ignored and swept under the rug the way that Pokemon and Nintendo, when they advertise these games, attempt to do it. Those are my thoughts on the Teal Mask Part 1. We'll get into more videos delving into the lore and characters as we get prepped for Part 2 later this year. But what did you guys think of the Teal Mask? Have you played it yet? If you did, let me know your review down below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it in the future, don't forget to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and turn the notification bell on so you never miss any future content. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.